Hello you, I hope you're good. So, how did I make a successful film with over 6 million views and it even won an award with no film experience at all prior to it. My name is Kelsey Ellison, some of you probably already know me, but I wrote the film Sisters of House Black. I wrote it, I produced it, I was also in it. I also did many other random things in it, like costumes, like so many things. But that's what happens when you're on a low budget film. But yeah, I didn't have any film experience before doing this and I just wanted to share with you how I managed to do it. Because a lot of you have been asking me this question, how you can make a fan film or how you can make your own film. So obviously it started with... So the script took me a long, long time to develop. It was an idea that I'd had for quite a long time. I'd always wanted to make a film. I'd always been interested in making films and making bigger projects rather than just my YouTube videos. I thought it was really cool for my first film that I would ever make would be a fan film because it's something that you can kind of already base it off. You already know the foundations of the stories and the characters a little bit. So yeah, I wanted to try it out with a fan film first. And I had this idea about the sisters of House Black for a long time about the three black sisters from Harry Potter so Narcissa Malfoy, Andromeda Tongs and Bellatrix Black slash Lestrange and it's a story about those sisters. I also wanted to see a Harry Potter film from a female perspective and especially like a villain's perspective as well we haven't we haven't really seen that. So I never really wrote a script before this I'd love writing I've loved writing short stories ever since I was a kid but I never wrote a film script before so I had to do a lot of research on the good old YouTube and the good old internet on how film scripts are made and to be honest a lot of this whole process of making a film was just me learning from the internet myself on YouTube. I basically took myself to film school for like a year. I think it took about half a year to figure out how to write a script properly. Like I practiced with a couple of scenes that I had in my head and then for the whole kind of like learning how to produce, learning how to find locations, how to format a film, basically like what makes a good film, what makes a good story arc, etc. Basically anything to do with filmmaking, I learned from YouTube and I just spent a whole year just watching videos and taking myself to film school but in my house online. I also did try making some like little short films as well before Sisters of House Black so I made like a little horror short. I actually made two little horror shorts actually. So yeah I did try out a couple of short films before I went into Sisters of House Black. But yeah getting the script together was probably one of the hardest parts and probably the longest part because even when we were filming I still there was never like a finished draft. Just there was so many drafts of this script and so many hurdles I had to overcome as well. One because obviously Harry Potter is under Warner Brothers so it's copyrighted. We're going to copyright a little later because that is very fan film specific but I did get a few limitations as from the script halfway through filming. <laughs> The, the film so the script had to be rechanged again so there were so many drafts of the script and my first draft was terrible it was like a long story it was basically a story I described everything there was so much talking and not much doing one of the things that really helped me figure this out was the very first draft that I'd finished I had already cast Andromeda and Narcissa the two other main characters so I got us three together to just read through the whole script and like within four or five pages I just knew that this needed a a lot of work still but yeah just hearing people talk out the first draft really helped me know what needed to be fixed what needed to go what I need to possibly add or change and that was probably the most helpful thing that I did when first making the script and then I just wrote and wrote and rewrote and rewrote and I just watched films I still watched like YouTube videos videos I was like a YouTube video junkie like educational YouTube video junkie at this point I finally got the script down to an hour long which is what the original script was supposed to be it was supposed to be an hour long so I wrote the script it was finished to how I thought it was going to be finished and now I needed to make this into a film so I had to get a team together. I'd never filmed before, filmed before. I'd always been on my own, making videos by myself as a YouTuber in my bedroom or vlogging outside, but it was all me. I filmed, edited, and promoted, and everything. So this was a new experience for me and I had to find a director, I had to find a cinematographer, I had to find other actors, I had to find 
wardrobe, hair and makeup, lighting, sound, everything. I'm sure I'm missing something out. Yeah, so there was a lot. There's a lot of people involved in making a film. This one especially was challenging because it was such a low budget film, and again, nobody could actually make money from this project, so it all had to be volunteers, which made it even more challenging for my very first film. Now I'm pretty introverted. Like I hate contacting people I don't know or reaching out to people, but I had this drive. I really wanted this film to be a thing. This wanting to happen kind of overtook the introvertedness, which was which was nice. Thank you. I first reached out on Facebook and just told my friends that this was an idea that I was having and it was something I wanted to do and I actually did get a couple of people from that initial call out so that was good and then I also there's Facebook groups I'm in London so there's like London film making groups and you can put call outs in those and I did that for cast and crew and also in real life as well I was just constantly talking about this film idea to people like <laughs> like even when we weren't even talking about it like I was I must have been so annoyed I'm like oh my gosh I, I have this film idea um, I need to get like a film team together to make this I'm really wanting to do this and that also worked as well so yeah just talking about it online and offline one of the people I needed was a director once I knew I found the director I knew that I would be able to find more people because for some reason when there's a director everyone else is like oh yeah this sounds like it's an official thing there's a director it's quite difficult at first I approached a few people about this and one even just said to me that this was outright impossible that you couldn't do this. Yeah, and then again, and that I actually found the director through Facebook posts, which was Tom. Yeah, we just met up and we discussed the script and Tom really, really understood the script and the story and the characters so well. It was like we had the same brain and I just knew that he would be great as a director for this film and he was on board and I'm so grateful that he wanted to do this. Petros, who was the cinematographer on this and also the editor on Sisters of House Black, I previously kind of knew. I'd reached out to him actually to help me film a music video which never happened and then when I was thinking of a cinematographer or somebody with equipment or somebody just for gen to just to help me in general about filmmaking Petrus was the first person I thought of so I messaged him on Instagram yeah I basically started off just asking him for advice and then somehow he came along and he was a huge part of the Sisters of House Black project and now we are continuously making projects and films together which is great as for casting I didn't really get that sorted until after the funding had been raised which funding I will get into later as well this was something I was a little bit more knowledgeable in because I I am an actor myself so I know how castings work and it was actually really fun casting it was again the same thing same situation just talking about it online and offline putting it in Facebook groups putting it on Instagram putting it on Twitter just getting your friends to share it and I also used websites like Mandy actors and star now and Facebook actors groups to put out the casting calls for the characters and we did auditions mainly online because that saved money for the budget so we we did self tapes and zoom call no, it wasn't zoom then it was skype skype call Voldemort was the hardest person to cast it took so long to cast Voldemort <laughs> It was a really long process and a lot of hustling and just constant energy and constant talking to people to get this team together. It was not easy, but it is worth it. It's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do if you wanna have a casting crew for your film. But I couldn't make a film if I didn't have any money, so let's talk about fundraising. Let's get the money. Ooh, I refuse to wear that. The, it's recording right now. This was the hardest thing for me. I do not like asking people for money or a huge audience of people for money for like a silly little project. So this was hard. It was hard work. And yes, we did need money. Even though it was a volunteer based film, you still need money to make a film. You need money for equipment. You need money for food. You need money for locations. You need money for travel. Promoting the film as well. I used a little bit of budget for like Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Oh, also you need money for the editing process, for effects packages. You also need money as well. If you're doing an Indiegogo or GoFundMe, you need money for the rewards send out the rewards and stuff so yeah you need money there was two problems for this one asking for money is not fun two I was personally doing a copyrighted franchise so I had to really do my research on how other fan films had done their fundraising and I learned from what they would gotten in trouble for basically don't do what they did that was really helpful, especially for Harry Potter stuff. They don't seem to like if your Indiegogo rewards are things that are like merch. 
like t-shirts and stuff like that so you really have to be clever with the kind of rewards you give something that can't be copyrighted you can't copyright a wand so one of the rewards was wands and you can't really copyright letters either or pictures of me and stuff like that so you just have to be creative with especially franchise kind of things but if you're not doing a franchise film it's all open game you can do whatever you want I also just did a ton of research as well looking at other films fundraising websites and what was successful for them and a lot of things that were successful for them is that they made like a video or like a trailer or a mini scene or something like that and then put it on their Indiegogo so I got my friend Liam I am so so thankful for Liam because he literally is responsible for Sisters of House Black happening we did like these little character trailers for Bellatrix Andromeda and Narcissa and he filmed the Bellatrix and Narcissa one and then I had to go up north film the Andromeda one and we just did character trailers and just so people could have a feel for the characters and see these characters already in real life and want to see more of them and want to see them in a film and get them excited about it and that really really worked and also what I did before I even started launching the Indiegogo is I started telling people on YouTube and on my social media that this was going to be a thing that this was something I'm working on that this is something that I wanted to make into a reality so my audience already knew what to expect it didn't just come out of nowhere and I also before that I did other Harry Potter projects. I made Harry Potter videos and I also did a Harry Potter series that I just completely self-funded myself that was a really simple talk to camera video diary series. You know it was it's okay but people could see that like you were making creative series and films and stuff like that and they would want to see more they'd want you to see you progress and go to the next step so i think that really helped to getting like the interest and people actually wanting to even possibly fund the film however i was very lucky i don't know how or why but the day after i released the indiegogo page dancing hermione went viral and <laughs> on my twitter the pinned tweet was my characters trailer and the Indiegogo link. Because Dancing Hermione was in the same world as Harry Potter and Sister House Black is a Harry Potter fan film, I was just, that was just a stroke of luck. And that boosted my Indiegogo um, up really quickly at the start. It helps the page get boosted on Indiegogo. I wanted to fundraise 10,000 pounds for this film, which actually was nowhere near enough. And we got to 5,000 really quickly. And then it really slowed down and I just did the annoying thing where I just kept on talking about it in every single video that I made. I reminded people that this was the thing I was doing on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. It felt so annoying. People don't watch all of your stuff as much as you think. You might feel like everyone is getting fed up of you talking about it, but actually like only a percentage of people see your things all the time. That's what works. You do have to keep talking about your Indiegogo and your film. I also went on a radio show and I talked about Sisters of House Black and as wanting to fundraise to make it into a thing. And yeah, you could do stuff like that. You could go out into more public forums like radio shows or newspapers or blog posts. You can reach out to all those kind of things. Mine was a little bit difficult because it was under a franchise. If you're not under a franchise, you really, it's so much easier. <laughs> I couldn't have any newspapers or any press around this film. Ugh. Hard, difficult, and I'm very grateful that I already had a kind of established audience on online, or else that would have been really difficult. I also got approached by management to do a collaboration with their jewellery that they make. We would make the sisters' jewellery, and we'd show it in the film, and in exchange, they would help fund a little bit of the film. I also teamed up with another production company called KER. It was a perfect collaboration and it really bumped up the fundraising a lot. So think about that as well when you're making your own film and you want to fundraise. Maybe you get a portion of it from Indiegogo and then maybe you get a portion from collaborations with brands or with products. It was a very, very stressful and long process but we finally hit our goal. We got almost 12,000 pounds. We had our money, we had our cast and crew, we had our script, so we needed to start filming. So this is like the pre-production, preparing to film it was stressful. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I had to learn a lot along the way. I basically like threw myself into this, obviously learning all the things online, but now I had to physically do it. And honestly, I think sometimes when you need to learn something, you just have to do it. You have to learn in the process. And that's definitely what I did on this film. And so, yeah, so one of the first films we needed to film were locations. We needed to film at locations. And this was a nightmare. I didn't take into consideration that this was a film that included magic. This was also a film that included very a very rich family. So we needed places that kind of looked magical and 
rich on <laughs> not very much money for a film that 12,000 pounds is a lot of money I will say that but for a film it is not London doesn't really give much for free and they like to charge an arm and a leg so this was a puzzle again there's Facebook groups for this and there's also I just had to generally just go through the internet and look for things and also just go out and go location scouting as well and as well because this film had a lot of memories in this like jumped to different memories we needed a lot of locations so when you are writing your first film and you know you're probably not gonna have a huge budget keep that in mind I did not keep that in mind and then I was like oh we need so many locations but what I did do to help keep costs down was I found locations that could be used for multiple purposes we filmed almost half of the film in this London townhouse it had different rooms we used that we just spent a whole day it was a very stressful day but we we did it and then a couple of scenes were actually in forests and outdoors for the forest stuff, I did have to pay a small fee, but I just told them what was happening. I had to give a donation basically for the for the grounds. Yeah, so that was a lot cheaper than usual. I just had to do a lot of hustling. I had to put on my little my little manager hat and just be brave, be a big girl <laughs> and call people up and hustle and be like, this is not a it's a non-profit film. This is helping people, um, helping film students learn how to get their skills, it's gonna help them progress in their careers once they leave. It was a lot of that. When you're looking for locations as well, you do have to keep an open mind. Like you might see something and not think that it's right from just looking at it, but then you have to imagine with lighting and with set dressing as well, if you could transform that so you can actually get like a cheaper place and transform it with lighting and set design. You've gotta keep your imagination open as well when looking for locations. The Sisters House Black, one of the most difficult locations for me was, there was two. One was Bellatrix's bed. Bedroom. Nothing in the townhouse suited Bellatrix and it was really hard to find like a gothic dark tall grandeur root bedroom for some reason that wasn't like super super expensive or in a manor house but then I started to look at hotels and I managed to hustle a hotel to let us use that room and then the other one was probably obviously Hogwarts. How was I gonna find a castle? I needed a castle but I managed to do it by just calling and telling them what was happening. In exchange they just wanted us to eat at their bar, everyone all the cast and crew to eat and drink at their bar and make money for from that and they just let us use the grounds which was amazing sometimes you can be surprised if you just ask and tell people what's going on and just be a little bit cheeky overall I had to find 10 locations don't do that on your first film don't another thing we had to organize were storyboards we did a lot of storyboarding before we actually started filming so you knew exactly what shots you were getting before you were going on to set because again one that saves so much time two it's good for editing three everybody knows what's going on time is money when when you start filming especially on a low budget film you only have like that one day you can't go back and reshoot so you need to be organized you need to know exactly what is going on yeah researching what storyboarding was and what good storyboarding is or basically making a storyboard that the team understands is vital for filming for every single scene also before filming we would try and rehearse the scenes with the actors before we even got onto set as well because yeah, it saves time and the, the actors will feel comfortable in their characters and we rehearsed every single scene most of them were on Skype and the Voldemort one was in real life. All of the action stuff was in real life. And me, Hannah and Abby and Tom and Petros were in a group chat. And we were constantly, especially with Tom, talking about the characters, what was going on in their heads in the scene. The actors were very prepared. So lines learned, characters developed, production parts organized, and we were good to go. We filmed. We filmed sporadically over a year. So it wasn't a constant chunk of filming. Actually, I thought it was better than just doing a big chunk because you managed to take breaks in between and analyze what worked and what didn't work on those set days especially like as a new filmmaker we started in August 2018 and finished in July 2019 and also in the middle of that we started editing the film which goes on to post-production do not underestimate post-production found the cast and crew We've got the money, we've filmed the film, but you have to make the film into a thing after. You have to edit the whole thing or else it's not a film really. So not only did we have to find a team to film, we had to find a team to edit. And ours was a very bare bones editing team because we were such low budget. On that note, I actually believe I did pretty good with the budgeting on this film. I'm actually pretty good at budgeting in general, but if you know that you're not that kind of person, 
it would be helpful to get someone on board to help you with the finances because that money can go so quickly if you don't organize it and you're not keeping track of everything that you're spending. So the main bulk of editing actually involved myself and Petros and we did bring on a team to help with the effects eventually as well. Petros did most of the VFX though and absolutely everything to do with the editing. He did such an amazing job and it was very stressful for him and we learned from that and we knew that we would need a bigger team for post-production if we were to ever make anything again. And then there was also music. And again, I had to find someone for music. Just did the general calling out, talking about it, posted about it. I eventually found Matthew, who is so, so talented. And music is such an important part for me for films. You really have to nail the music. If you're the producer, like I was, that you keep in check with your editor and organize their editing schedule. Because I just thought that it would be okay. I kind of stepped back a little, because I was like, I'd, it was already so tiring making this film. And I was like, oh, I can breathe a little now. No, no. As the producer, I had to make sure that this was all organized. Got to this point where I felt a little bit awkward, like constantly nagging and constantly asking because it was such a low budget thing that I, I felt bad wanting to see things and constantly nagging and seeing if everything was being done. But don't, because it will be worse in the long run if you don't. But we got there in the end and the film was made. Let's talk about... Promotion. So you want to put this film out, but you want people to see it. So these were a few things that I did. Again, I was constantly talking about this film. I was putting it in all of my videos, all of my social media posts, trying to get friends to share things. And if you're not using copyrighted stuff, I would highly recommend reaching out to press and blog posts. I couldn't have any press around it. So instead, I would like go into Harry Potter groups and talk about it. And actually also not just talk about my film, engage with other people as well in other posts. So it wasn't like, hi, here's my film, bye. Also, we released a scene a year before the whole film was out and that really helped up build excitement. And we made our own social media accounts for the film. Those accounts gained quite a lot of followers. Creating a social media plan for those accounts really, really helped. It constantly was reminding people that this was a thing. It was bringing in new people. And because it was Harry Potter, I did have a little leeway because people were more excited about it and they were telling their friends about it. I also did use Facebook ads, which did work. I did not <laughs> expect the film to do as well as it did. I thought it was gonna get about 100,000 views, not six million views. And the crazy thing is, is that it's still getting views today. People are still watching it. I'm still, I still get loads of comments every day from people watching this film. So I just think in general, the really, really hard grog and the hard work of promoting, cause it is hard work, helped. We got a Leaky Cauldron Award for it as well, which <laughs> was so happy about. Leaky Cauldron is basically like a Harry Potter fan site that I have followed since I was so young. And to get an award from the Leaky Cauldron, I know it's not an Oscar, but like it means, it means a lot. It's an award winning film. So that is pretty much everything I did to make my first ever film. Yeah, and I just thought I would share these tips with you because a lot of you were asking. I'm gonna talk about copyright now, but if you're making a film that isn't under a franchise and this does not apply to you, then thank you for watching. Um, but also if you're interested in how I worked around that, then keep listening. So let's talk about this. Probably wondering if I ever got in touch with Warner Brothers or was there like a contract or anything or if I even got in trouble with Warner Brothers. At the beginning of the process, I did actually try to find a legal contact for Warner Brothers and I couldn't find anything. So I decided to go ahead and just be as cautious as possible and just not like sell things or try and make money off of this film basically in any way. And I made it very, very clear from the start that this is a fan film. This is not an official film. I made that very clear from the start. They did find out about the Indiegogo eventually, but it was after we'd raised all the money and they told us to take down the Indiegogo, but we'd reached our goal. So I wasn't upset about that. Cause I think the thing with Indiegogo is you can just keep it going and keep raising money even when you passed your goal. They also sent us a long list of guidelines of what we could and couldn't do. I can't share the whole guidelines for reasons. It did bring up a lot of difficulties actually. So the film is 40 minutes. And like I said, I wrote an hour long script. So I had to chop off 20 minutes. I think for over 40 minutes is classed as a feature film. Um, the reason why I chopped off 20 minutes, you pro I can't tell you why, but you can probably guess why. There were so many guidelines. Um, I think I've said a couple of them in this video, try and figure out which ones they were. I know I'm being very mysterious, but they did send me a legal thing. But I would say if you're wanting to do, especially Harry Potter film, kind of follow what I did and you might not get in trouble. I mean, I think the rules are different for everybody. I, I've seen other Harry Potter fan films that have done different things to me and not got into trouble. 
So I think it's a case by case thing, but yeah, just research other films and see how they not got into trouble or how they got into trouble and avoid that. And I think that goes with any other franchise as well, not just particularly Harry Potter. So basically, if you wanted to make a film, prepare for it to be your whole life, prepare for it to take so much work. You really do need to put in a lot of work to make a film. Prepare to learn a lot of lessons. <laughs> prepare to prepare, you have to be prepared. Prepare to ask people for money unless you're rolling in it or you have some angel investor. Prepare to have to learn to take on multiple roles, especially if it's a low budget and you have a bare bones cast and crew, you'll have to have your hands on with multiple different things. Like I said, I was producer, um, I was actor, wasn't originally supposed to be an actor and then something happened and then I was an actor and I also helped direct some of the stuff, I also helped with editing, I did all the costumes and there's probably, oh catering, I did catering. You have to learn how to keep yourself motivated throughout the thing, it can get very stressful and it can feel like giving up, you have to keep going. It's, it's, it's like, it's not straight road, it's like a curved wiggly woggly zigzaggy crazy loop de loop road to make the film. You gotta learn how to work with people, you gotta be good to people. But yeah, I would never take this experience back. I absolutely loved doing this and I don't think I would have ever done it any other way. I have learned so much about filmmaking but also about myself and also my confidence has grown so much as well because I had to manage a whole team of people which I'd never done in my life before either. I would love to hear if you decide to make anything yourself or you have something in the works, let me know in the comments. And I feel like I covered everything but if there's something that I didn't say, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll reply to you as best as I can. But yeah, I feel like this is a long video, hopefully it helps. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video, bye!